Nebraska moves to 1-0 for the first time in what seems forever with a nice 40-7 win over UTEP. And maybe there's going to be those people that say, well, it's UTEP. But you know what? It was an ass-kicking. It was a pretty, probably a, just about a perfect game for Nebraska. Now, in the first opening drive, you know, it, it was a little crusty. You got the false start, and I can't remember what the second penalty was, but you had a second and 30, but it wasn't like it bothered anybody because they just were unflappable and went down the field and scored anyway. You know, and then UTEP scores, and then we get it going on our next drive, and Anthony Dowdell fumbles, and I get your texts, I get your, you know, notices that it's the same shit as last year, and oh, oh, it's the end of the world, and nothing's changed, and you know what happened after that? Two plays later, I think it was, uh, Nebraska got a safety, and then two plays after that, Nebraska hits a 59-yard touchdown, and that that that's key. And why is that key? It's key because in previous seasons, what we've seen is bad things happen. And Nebraska, you know, they hang their heads and they go, you know, they get into all this feel bad for me kind of shit going on. And they didn't do that at all. They they had something bad happen. And I don't think Dowdell played the rest of the game because we have a gob of running backs that can get on the field and apparently just play football. Uh, we ended up with, I have stats. And I'm going to look at them. We ended up with 11 different rushers. We ended up with 11 different receivers. We ended up with three different quarterbacks. And those are good things because everybody gets on the field. Everybody feels like they get to contribute. They get to play. Most importantly, uh, Matt Rule and his staff get to look at who was out there, what the lineups were like, and who played well and who didn't and who did what and who did not. And they got a whole gob. They get many data points out of this game. And I think that's key to going on through the season. Um, in a word, I think that if I had one word to describe this game, it would be crisp. Because, you know, I've been watching other teams and a lot of them have not looked very crisp. Iowa, for example, I think they had nine yards in their first two possessions. Uh, I was at six to nothing at the half, and then they scored. You know, they did well in the second half, but their first half was miserable. Uh, the same has been true for a couple other teams I've been watching. Nebraska went out and scored 30 points in the first half, and when was the last time they scored 30 points? <laughs> I mean, it's been a while. And, you know, Dylan Royola looks, well, he looks the part. I mean, he completed passes that were beautifully thrown balls. Uh, they weren't all perfect, but he finished 19-27, 238 yards, two touchdowns, quarterback rating, 70% completion rating, completion rate, and a quarterback rating of 168.9. I don't, that's pretty good, you know, compared to what we've seen, especially in the last few years. Uh, Harburg got to play, hi, our buddy Heinrich Harburg, he got to play. He was 5-for-5. Five five. He had a quarterback rating of 158.8. And then we saw Jalen Gramstad, uh, the NAI guy that transferred in, and not Danny Kalen. And I think the reason for that is you don't want to use, you want to preserve Danny Kalen's red shirt, but you don't want to use him in a game now because, you know, if Dylan Royola gets hurt, then you still want to be able to use, preserve the red shirt, but use Danny Kalen in other games. Uh, Emmett Johnson, eight carries eight attempts for 71 yards 8.9 average dowdell uh dante dowdell i got that wrong early earlier because i'm lousy with names this was a good name this was a good game to learn a lot of names about guys we have on this team dante dowdell eight for 55 uh one touchdown 6.9 yard average ramir johnson played you know i was glad to see that eight gert gabe Irvin. <laughs> Played two touchdowns. Uh, Quentin Ives, Kenneth Williams, Mickey Nelson, uh, Mazuka, Mazkua. So I still got naming learning to do. And then we had Nebraska receiving. Isaiah Nayor had six catches for 121 yards, one TD, that 59 yard TD. You know, there was a reason. I mean, you saw that the size of our receivers made a difference when they just out-muscled people for the ball. And plus, Dylan Royola made some really amazing throws. I mean, they were they were dots. I, 
Was it Brock Heward that was doing the talking? Because I didn't normally don't pay attention to the announcers, but he pointed out how he feathered a pass over the top of a linebacker rather than just straight throwing a straight bullet to a guy. And, you know, those are small things that you should pick up on that, um, I'm going to point out that maybe, maybe, just maybe, maybe it might be a really good season for Nebraska football. It was a fun game to watch. I mean, the first half was a fun. It got a little, I mean, come on, we're running the ball. We're running. A lot of guys are playing. It was enjoyable, but after a while, it was kind of like, okay, when's this going to be over? I Look at me, the first game, and I'm already getting spoiled. And I, like uppity or something. Uh, 507 total yards, 284 yards passing, 223 rush yards. That's a nice mix. 31st downs. Uh, here's a key 11 to 17 on third down. And I think, you know, in the later in the game, they were just kind of running things and doing things to see how well the offense would work and see who would be in the game or see who would do their jobs amongst younger players that got on the field. So, Hey, maybe they could have gone 13 or 14 for 17. Uh, yards per rush, average 4.7. Good time of possession, 38 minutes. Uh, the the defense got, what, two takeaways? The nice Malcolm Hartzog interception, uh, interception by Ramir Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> so Nebraska ends up positive on the turnover margin, which is a good sign, too. And then uh, I think, you know, that's it. I Oh, oh, one thing, one thing that was amazing to watch was we actually returned punts. I don't see the listed here, but uh, well, let's go find it. We returned punts. We actually set up and returned punts, and they didn't just fair catch all the time, and they didn't look like they were lost or didn't know what to do on special teams, well, at least in the punt return game. And I think that's a huge thing, you know. You're at least gaining yardage every time you get the ball. Uh, Brian Bashini had two punts for 97 yards, 48.5 average. Uh, one field goal of 20 for Tristan Alvano. That's good. Get his confidence up. Um, come on, punt returns. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Three uh, punts returned for 25 yards, average of eight, long of 13. You know, that's that's not bad. I think you want to average, you know, 10 yard. 10 yards on a punt return and you're doing well. So I, whatever thoughts you guys have, you know, we'll be around all week. I don't know if you noticed, but coordination now has a show pretty much every night of the week. And I will be on Monday night. I will be talking to a couple of Colorado Buffalo guys, and we're going to get into it because I, this should be a really good, big game. It's going to be an enormous game for Nebraska, obviously. And I think it's a springboard for the rest of the season. And right now, I mean, everything looks pretty damn good. So can you drink more Kool-Aid after the season starts? I imagine it's going to be a lot of chugging going on if that's the case. Take care of yourself. Go Big Red. Go Big Red.